In this video, I'll be solving an example using the torsion formula. Before I get started, I'll give you a second to pause and read over the question. Alright, so the main takeaways from the actual question are, the outer diameter is 2.5 inches and the inner diameter is 2.3 inches. The inner and outer diameter is a clear indication that the pipe is hollow. Now the question is asking us to solve for the shear stresses at points A and B, which are located here and here. It's important to know that these points are on the outer surface of the pipe. And we're also asked to use the shear stresses at points A and B to sketch the corresponding volume element. As you might recall from the corresponding lecture video, the torsion formula is the shear stress tau equals the torsional moment T times the radial distance C divided by the polar moment of inertia J. We'll be using this to solve for the shear stress at points A and B. Now we'll start off with the easy stuff. The first thing we'll look at is CO and CI. CO is equivalent to the outer diameter divided by 2, which in this case equals 1.25 inches, while CI is equivalent to the inner diameter divided by 2, which in this case is 1.15 inches. Since the shaft is hollow, we'll need to use both CO and CI to solve for J. We'll be able to do so with the following equation. Now, if we sub in the corresponding values, we'll end up with 1.088 inches to the power of 4. And now for the radial distance C. As I previously mentioned, points A and B are located on the outer surface of the shaft. And so, C equals CO. In other words, the C value for the shear stress at point A and B equal 1.25 inches. Now that we have both C and J, all we need to do is solve for T. We'll be solving for T on the following slides. In order to solve for T, I've drawn a free body diagram of the pipe below. While drawing the free body diagram, I chose the directions for the torques based on the right hand rule, where my thumb is pointing away from the surface of the cross section. In other words, the applied torques are positive if it's in the counterclockwise direction and negative if it's in the clockwise direction. Now we'll need to apply the method of sections at the point of interest if you want to solve for T. In other words, we'll need to take a cut just before A and B. When we apply the cut, we have the option to solve for either the left side or the right side. Since we don't know what the torque at C is, it would just be easier if we stuck with the left side. On the following slide, I'll begin solving for the shear stress at point A. On this slide, we'll figure out what the torque at A is, and we'll use it to solve for its corresponding shear stress. On the top right, I've included the original diagram of the shaft in case you need it for reference. On the bottom right, I've drawn the free body diagram of the shaft from the open end to just before A. Notice how I drew TA. I based the direction of TA on the sign convention we identified on the previous slide, where left is positive and right is negative. With this in mind, let's use an equilibrium equation and take the sum of the moments about the x-axis. Now, if we sum the torques from the open end to point A, will end up with negative 250 pound foot. Since the units of C and J are both in inches, it would make more sense to convert T into inches as well. And so, we'll have to multiply TA by 12 inches over one foot. As a result, we'll end up with negative 3,000 pound inches. Now, if we take the torsion formula and sub in the values for TA, C, and J, we'll end up with negative 3,446.69 pounds per inches square, which can be simplified to negative 3.45 KSI. Now this is the shear stress at point A. On the next slide, I'll be following the same process, but solving for the shear stress at point B instead. On this slide, we'll solve for the torque at point B and its corresponding shear stress. On the bottom right, I've drawn the free body diagram from the open end to just before point B. Just as before, we'll need to take the sum of the moments about the x-axis. If we sum the torques, we'll end up with 200 pound foot. 
since C and J are both in inches, we'll have to convert TB into inches as well. The alternative would be to convert C and J into phi, but that's just a lot more work. And so we need to multiply TB by 12 inches over one foot. As a result, we'll end up with 2400 pound inches. Once again, we'll be needing the torsion formula. If we sub in the corresponding values, we'll end up with 2,757 pound per inches square, which also equals 2.76 KSI. And this is the shear stress at point B. On the following slide, we'll be using the shear stresses at points A and B to draw the shear stress on the corresponding volume elements. Before I go over the actual example, I'll use this diagram to give you the general idea. So these cubes here represent the volume element. The arrows on the surface of these cubes represent the direction of the torque at the point of interest. We can obtain the direction of these arrows by observing the applied torque on the surface of the cross section. For instance, let's look at this volume element here. I've outlined the surface of the cross section in red. I've also redrawn the volume element as well as the corresponding arrow on the cross section. It's important to note we have to draw the arrows below the free surface. This is because the shear stress on the free surface equals zero. While drawing the remaining arrows, we must use the tip to tip and tail to tail approach. This is because the arrow on the opposite end of the element creates a couple moment. In order to counteract the couple moment, we'll have to apply the tip to tip and tail to tail approach. To be more specific, the highlighted portion here is drawn tip to tip and the highlighted portion here is drawn tail to tail. Now that you have a general idea, I'll continue the solution for this example on the following slide. On this slide, I'll draw the volume element at point A. While I was calculating for TA early in the video, I took a cut at point A and observed the left side. I made the assumption that the torque was applied in the counterclockwise direction. To make things easier, I'll be observing the right side now. The TA on the right side would have the same magnitude as the left side when I was acting in the clockwise direction. I've drawn the corresponding FPD diagram on the right from point A to point C. In order to help you visualize how we draw the volume element, I've also drawn a close-up of the cross section at point A on the left. Notice how the current direction of the torque results in a negative shear stress. This means our assumption of the direction of torque was wrong. Since the value is negative, we can simply redraw the torque in the counterclockwise direction. Doing so makes the shear stress at point A positive. Now let's draw the volume elements at point A. Since the torque is in the counterclockwise direction, the shear stress at point A is pointing upwards. If we use the tip to tip and tail to tail approach, we'll be able to determine the volume element at point A. On the following slide, I'll be following the same process to draw the volume element at point B. Now let's figure out what the volume element at point B is. Just as the previous slide, we'll be observing the right side of the shaft from point B to point C. While calculating TB, we made the assumption that the torque was applied in the counterclockwise direction. Since we're now observing the right side, the torque at B is in the clockwise direction. I've drawn the corresponding FPD diagram on the right from point B to point C. In order to visualize the direction of shear stress a little better, I've drawn the cross section at B on the left. Notice how the shear stress is positive. As a result, you won't have to modify anything. Now let's draw the volume element at point B. Since the torque is in the clockwise direction, the shear stress at point B is pointing towards the right. If we apply the tip to tip and tail to tail approach, we'll be able to determine the volume elements at point B. On this slide, I've summarized everything we saw for, which includes the shear stress and the volume elements at point A and B. Now this concludes the video for the example regarding the torsion formula. In the following video, we'll be going over the next section, the angle of twist.